Hey guys, welcome back to the shed. Today's been a long awaited video for some. We're putting the engine back together. I've got a lot to cover in this video, so I'm going to leave the timestamps in the description below. I'm going to assume that you've managed to pull your engine apart because the first thing you're going to need to do is inspect your piston and cylinder barrel for any wear. If you've got any big gouges or pieces chipped off either of these, you'll need to replace them. However, if you've got any small scratches, you'll probably be able to get away with it. Whilst inspecting your cylinder barrel for any damage, check the state of its cross hatching. After many hours of use, cylinder walls become shiny and smooth. This is known as being glazed. Your cylinder should have a visible cross hatch pattern like this. Don't worry if your cylinder barrel doesn't have the cross hatching anymore, because you can deglaze this using a number of different methods, and these are in order of preference. You could take your cylinder barrel to an engine shop and have them do it professionally. You could go online and buy yourself a honing tool which attaches into a drill, or if you're really careful and you know what you're doing, you could get a bit of scotch bright and do it yourself. However, you didn't hear that from me and I wouldn't advise doing it that way either. The reason you need a cross hatch pattern on your cylinder is to ensure your piston rings bed in properly. The cross hatching retains oil and prevents cylinder and piston ring scuffing. Make sure you clean out the decompression port whilst you're here. I've covered this in my decoking video. Next up, we'll need to clean our gasket faces. Remove any old bit of gasket that's still stuck on. Got any stubborn bits? Use a sharp Stanley blade held flat against the mating face and then scrape them off. Be careful not to gouge the mating faces. Now that we've done that, we need to ensure that there's no particles inside our cylinder barrel. This can be done by washing with warm soapy water, but make sure to dry your part as soon as possible and wipe down with a clean oiled cloth to stop corrosion. Do the same with your piston. Remove your old piston ring by holding one side against the piston, pushing the other side from the opening and lifting over the top of the piston. To install your new piston rings, place one end into the pin and hold it in place. Push on the other end of the ring and work your way around the piston. Try not to let the ring itself scratch the piston. If you have a four stroke engine, you'll have an extra oil ring to install. Make sure your piston goes the right way around. Some pistons have intake ports cut into their skirts. Unfortunately, mine doesn't, so I can't show you this. Install your new needle bearing, gudgeon pin, and retaining clips. Don't forget your gasket. To make your life easier, use two-stroke oil as a lubricant for the piston and the cylinder barrel. Crank your piston to its lowest point. Start the piston into the cylinder, then use your prop or hub to help push your piston into the remaining amount of the cylinder barrel. Spin the prop hub whilst holding the cylinder barrel to make sure the piston is moving freely. Add your head gasket and then the cylinder head. Install all the cylinder bolts hand tight and then torque them down to 15 newton meters. Do this in a cross pattern to evenly distribute pressure. Check your manual for your torque settings. Now that we're all back together, you'll need to run a run-in procedure to help bed in your piston rings, and I'll cover that in another video up here. We're so close to finishing this build, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. If you loved it, subscribe. And as always, I'll see you up in the air. Shoo.